Welcome in the Daily Wages studios. I'm Doug Kazarian alongside Joe Fortenbaugh, Stanford Steve also joining us. So news at a Ravens camp is that less of the pistol. Lamar Jackson to go under center more. Those comments coming from offense coordinator Greg Roman. Steve, how does this impact how you're viewing the Ravens this coming season? Well, first of all, Doug, doesn't everybody love an NFL headline in the middle of June uh, to get us jumping off and going crazy? I will bet there is one team out there that is shuffling around trying to find Greg Roman under center tapes with a quarterback, and you could go all the way back to like 2010 when he was at Stanford with Andrew Luck. But what this tells me is that the Ravens trust Lamar Jackson more with the throwing game, okay? And what happens now is they're going to say he's going to go under center. Greg Roman said there was not going to be what percentage of he was going to be under center. But what it does for me is tells me that they were limited in the play action game when you're in the pistol and your RPOs. If you just think back off the top of your head, how many of those deep throws to Hollywood Brown are down the middle of the field? What you can expect with a person under center in a play action game where they're going to use Lamar with his ball faking abilities and his dynamic playmaking stuff is he's going to be, they have the trust in him now to throw the ball down the field outside, outside the hash marks. So it, it, it shows me that they think Lamar has evolved. And I think I, for Ravens fans, I'd be excited for this. Yeah, this, this must mean a good thing, right? 6% yes. league low last year of, of snaps under center. League average is 36%. So clearly uh, they were well below the average. What about you? How does it impact your thoughts? So the Ravens are essentially the Oakland A's of the NFL, right? They're built for the regular season, but when it comes to the playoffs, that's just not their bag. That's not how they get it done. So when you want to talk about winning the AFC North, making any noise in the regular season, I can get behind that. They're 25 and seven in the regular season over the last couple of years. Problem is once they get to the playoffs, that's where Jackson needs to step up. Whether it's under center, whether it's dropping back, whether it's in the shotgun, it doesn't matter. The problem is in his three playoff losses, he's completing just over 50% of his passes with a couple interceptions, three, and four, inter four interceptions, three touchdowns, right? Those are not the numbers you need. If you're gonna make a deep run in the postseason, you need high level play on a consistent basis. The Ravens are not built to do that. At least we haven't seen it yet. So maybe I'll be wrong down the line, but I've seen some big regular season games from him. And then when it really comes down to it, like in Buffalo last year, nowhere to be found. But I think that's what Steve's speaking to, the evolution of the quarterback concept, more play action, more uh, diverse or uh, dynamic play calling because you have more sort of options once you turn to that route, right? Like, you right, can have but let's more flexibility. See it, let's see it in the regular okay. season when it matters because it's great that these little OTAs are taking place and now all of a sudden he's going under center. Last I saw of him was in Buffalo when they couldn't move the ball at all down the field. That's fair. That's fair. Let's bring in Tyler Fulgham. Tyler, uh, I thought I was high on the Ravens, but you're certainly higher. How does this impact how you're thinking? It just gives me a little more confidence. I picked the Ravens to win the Super Bowl last year. They didn't make that leap. I'm going to go back to them again this year because of the investments they made to help Lamar Jackson make these leaps as a passer. And I think Stanford Steve nailed it. In the modern National Football League, play action is a quarterback's best friend and it's much harder to do when you are five yards behind the center as opposed to when you are underneath center can turn your back hide the football and either give to a running back or if you hold it you can hold linebackers over the middle of the field now there are weapons around him and this Ravens team if Lamar is able to master these concepts and become a good play action passer I think the Ravens can make that leap especially against the really good defenses that Joe is referring to they will see in the AFC postseason so I like hearing this but it's one thing to say it and Greg Roman's a really good offensive coordinator it's another thing to see Lamar Jackson actually apply it on the field so I at least like how the Ravens are thinking about making Jackson a more complete quarterback yeah it's a continuation of their plan from a few years ago they brought in the right personnel coaching and players to build around Lamar Jackson utilize the Heisman Trophy winners strengths and they're continuing to evolve him from there of course Lamar Jackson uh, grabbed a lot of headlines a few years ago when he won the NFL MVP as a giant long shot. He's no, not the favorite this year, but he's among the favorites at 16 to 1. Patrick Mahomes, another former long shot winner, is your overall favorite at plus 550. Reigning MVP Aaron Rodgers at 7 to 1. Time will tell whether he is suiting up with the Packers again this year. And Tom Brady, 16 to 1. And Matthew Stafford, the newly acquired quarterback of the Rams at 16 to 1. All right, let's go back to Tyler here. 
What, what does this mean for Lamar in your eyes, the, the betting market in terms of the ability to win the MVP? I actually think Lamar, even though he won one recently, if he makes this seismic step as a passer, that is something new we haven't seen, and it will be some crazy numbers that could lead to him being an MVP favorite. Yeah, I can see certainly that narrative being a helpful component to this. Anything stand out for you in terms Russell of Russell Wilson at 18 to 1, especially if they get Julio Jones. The second Julio Jones lands in Seattle, should he land in Seattle, 18 to 1 is going to come down. So you could beat the market there. Now, if he doesn't land in Seattle, all right, Susan Lucci factor, right? Would it take 19 nominations before she finally got that Emmy? She earned that Emmy, Doug. She had earned it plenty of times prior to that in the eyes of many. But I digress for a moment. Shane Waldron's coming into Seattle as the new offensive coordinator. He was the passing game coordinator from the Los Angeles Rams. So he studied under Sean McVay. We've seen what McVay's assistants have gone on to do. Some have done well, some have done poorly, but the ones who have done well, like what we saw with Arthur Smith in Tennessee under Ryan Tannehill, they've put up some big time numbers. I just think Mahomes, Chiefs, they improve their offensive line. I don't think it's going to get worse than plus five or get better than plus 550. I think last year we saw Wilson become the favorite at one point, other quarterbacks, but in the end, it was the quarterbacks of the two top seeds. I mean, I think the only thing that hurts you and this would hurt anybody is the opportunity for an injury because if he doesn't right. get hurt, course, you know course. the numbers are going to be there. You know the win should be there. The opportunity is going to be there for you. Safe play, but at 5-1, to one, you could see that thing as low as even money. Yeah, six, seven, by like six, week six, eight. Yeah, exactly. Well said. So that, that's what I'm thinking, but I know that's not that fun. But uh, big news from the Ravens, though. Lamar Jackson maybe, maybe continuing to evolve into an even better passer. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.